What's up, everyone? It's Karthik with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the upcoming inflation numbers that are super important for the economy and more important for the markets as well. Because as we know, the Federal Reserve is very much de dependent on where inflation numbers end up uh, because that's what's going to dictate their monetary policy and more importantly, their interest rates for where they are set for the coming uh, FOMC meetings. So this right here is a spreadsheet that we are going to be going over today. So as you guys know that I like to work with a lot of data, I'm going to explain exactly what this is. I've taken it a little bit step further to kind of give you a bit of a probability outcome scenario on what rates we need to hit in order to get inflation down to the Fed's target and what the real interest rates will be depending on where the Federal Reserve ends up with their respective federal funds rate. So as always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful, please make sure that you drop a like. And all I'm asking is that you share this video with one more investor, trader, friend, or family member in your WhatsApp groups, Discord channels, wherever you want to share. I would really appreciate that so we can keep this community growing with more subscribers and members. So I would really appreciate that. Uh, as always, again, link's going to be down below for our Patreon and Discord as well. So inflation numbers are coming out next week on August 14th. So August 14th is when the next CPI report will be released at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Of course, I'll be live to cover those numbers. And this right here was the previous report from June 2024. So remember that inflation numbers are a lagging indicator. We always get that report for the previous month. So since we are already in August, we're going to get the report for the previous month. Now, this right here is the consensus. So CPI, uh, we've got the uh, headline CPI and then we've got the uh, core CPI. Core CPI excludes for the more volatile items like food and energy, uh, but core CPI expectations on a year over year basis expected to be at 3.2%. CPI on a headline basis expected to stay steady at 3%. And this number, to be precise, is at 2.97, right? It's been rounded up a little bit uh, to 3%. And CPI month over month is expected at 0.2%. And core CPI month over month expected at 0.2%. So those right there are going to be the forecast for the upcoming inflation report. Now, let's dive in a little bit further. So what I have over here is since the beginning of 2020, so January of 2020, I've got the CPI index. This is called the CPI index reading, which was at 257.97, okay? And we track the month over month change of that CPI index. The CPI index is a index of the basket of goods and services that are within the inflation report. And then if you come all the way down, this is where we are sitting as of June 24th, 2024. These are not seasonally adjusted. So these are unadjusted figures, not seasonally adjusted. Uh, and we saw a 0.03% increase on a month over month basis. And we're sitting at 2.97%, which is again, almost at 3%. So if you come over to the charts over here and uh, take a look at the uh, 12 month inflation figure. So this right here is going to be the last 20 years worth of inflation data on a 12 month basis, meaning year over year. So if you come over and zoom in a little bit further, you'll notice that June 3%, that's exactly what we have. That's 2.97 for May, 2024, 3.27 or 3.3. So again, if I zoom in a little bit further, you'll notice that we were at 3.3% in April 3.4, you come back here, 3.36. So if I essentially remove for one more decimal, it's going to be pretty accurate. So we're looking at 3.4 and then let's just look at the last prior three months as well, 3.5 in March of 2024. That was March of 2024, 3.5. Then we've got February 3.2 and January 3.1. So we've got 3.2 and 3.1. So those are the numbers that I've calculated myself on the spreadsheet, looking at uh, unadjusted non-seasonal CPI index readings and the month over month as well. So what we have tracked over here also is the three month, six month and 12 month averages for both month over month and annualized CPI readings. So right now, as it stands, if I take just the last three months worth of average and annualize it, we're looking at a 2.36% headline CPI. Six month average puts us slightly above. In fact, very much above, almost at 5% on an annualized basis. 12 month average puts us at just under 3% and the 24 month average is just over three and a half, uh, just under three and a half percent at the moment. So the, the more recent trend of three months is 
very good of 2.36 but six month is incredibly high and uh, i'm guessing because of the increase over here in january of february so earlier this year we definitely did see quite significant increases so january february march we saw inflation accelerated from 3.1 to three and a half percent you can see that those three months we actually moved higher and you can see that over here as well so january we were 3.1 pushed up to 3.2, then 3.5. So we did accelerate quite a bit. So that's kind of skewing the average a little bit. And uh, again, the last three months, we've actually seen inflation numbers uh, modestly up, you know, 0.4%, then 0.17, and then practically no inflation. I think on a seasonally adjusted basis, we actually saw a deflation because this number was negative as well. So that's where we are. And this is the chart that you can see right on the BLS website. This is the exact same chart. And you can see that we kind of peaked out in uh, 2022. So June of 2022 So exactly two years ago, we peaked out at over 9%. And since then, we have seen a consistent decline in overall headline CPI, and then a lot of consolidation sideways. And right now sitting at 2.97 or just under 3% at the moment. Really, this is the level that we've been since June of 2023. So it's been well over a year. We've been kind of fluctuating between, uh, you know, 3 to 4%. So we've gotten up to 3.7 in September of 23, then came back down to 3%, then pushing back up to 3.5, and now sitting just under 3% again. Now, this is where the magic happens. This is essentially giving us an idea of how the CPI index will change in the future every month if we were to go down on a month over month basis. So this right here is going to be month over month. Let me just highlight that very quickly. That's this. So this right here is the row giving us the month over month change in headline CPI. Um, and then this right here will be the corresponding CPI index values for that particular month. So of course, July 2024, we're starting off with a 314 you know, that's going to be that number. Uh, in fact, I think this should be June. So let me just update that. So that should be June and this should be July. So seven. And we're just going to drag this lower a little bit all the way till May of 2025. So that's what we're looking at over here. So in July, if we see a July report that we're going to get next week uh, on August 14th, if we get a negative 0.2% month over month change in headline CPI, meaning that we're actually seeing deflation, this number is going to come down. That index level is going to come down to 313.547. Similarly, if we see no change, there is absolutely no inflation, no deflation. There is a 0% increase or decrease in the month over month inflation. That number is going to stay exactly where it is because there's absolutely no change. And similarly, this right here are going to be the figures for July. If we see a 0.1% all the way up to 0.7% month over month increase. And now, once we have these numbers, we can try to estimate what the inflation rate on a year-over-year -year basis, the CPI year-over-year, -year would be if we are seeing a month-over-month -month decline of 0.2% all the way to an increase of 0.7% on a month-over-month -month basis. So this right here would be that number. I just want to be clear here. So let me just update this as well. So that's going to be actually June. And this right here would be July. Uh, and we're just going to drag this down a little bit. And we're you know calculating all the way till May of 2025. So uh, June, we're staying at 2.97. So just just under 3%. That's where we are. And for the July number, which we are going to get next week on August 14th, if we see a 0.2% decline month over month, we're going to come down to 2.77. And if we continue on this path of a 20 basis point decline, or in other words, deflation every single month, all the way for the next 12 months since May, inflation eventually is going to drop down to 0.73% on a year over year basis as well within the Federal Reserve's target. So this gives you a bit of an idea that over the next 12 months, what is the number that, the, that we need to target from an inflation standpoint, so that we are on a path to getting down to under 3%. So Obviously, none of these paths would be possible because in this example, we are increasing inflation rate on a year over year basis. The month over month uh, cannot increase because then we will continue to go up because you can see that we're going from 2.97 to over 4% over here by May if we increase uh, our CPI index by 0.1% every single month, 0.2% and we'll be sitting at over 5%. If we see inflation increase every month by 0.7%, then we have a risk of getting up to over 11% here. And getting back to that peak of over 9%,
0.5% is going to do that job for us in the next 12 months. In other words, if we continue to see a 0.5% month over month increase in inflation, uh, we are going to be sitting at well over 8.7, just under 9% by May 2025. So really where we want, what we want to do is we want to operate here. We want to see some deflation, as you would imagine. We want that index to come down so we can actually see the year over year inflation also come down. And this is uh, more likely going to be that situation. I mean, last print on a seasonally adjusted basis, we saw deflation because we saw negative 0.1%, as you can see in this report. So negative 0.1%. This was seasonally adjusted number for uh, May through June. And then prior to that, we were at 0.0%. So those were two very good readings. And this is exactly where we want to operate. We want to operate here um, between these two numbers. So we want to be somewhere between 0.0%, basically no inflation or no deflation, or actually see some deflation in order for CPI year over year to come down to the Fed's target. So 1.84 would be that ideal number, and that is going to show us that consistent trend lower, exactly what the Federal Reserve has been looking for to get that greater confidence that we are indeed moving towards the target. Now, this right here is the federal funds rate. This is where we are with the Fed funds rate, and this these are the next... Um, what is it, count-wise, nine FOMC meetings. Uh, the June, July, in fact, has already happened, uh, but this is really just showing us the next seven FOMC meetings from September all the way through June of 2025. And uh, the these are the uh, expectations as of today. So as we know, uh, the markets are pricing in for a September cut and uh, getting rates down to 5%. Then by November, they're expecting a 50 basis point cut to get them down to 4.5. Then by December, another 25 basis point cut. So we're expecting a total of 100 basis points worth of cuts in 2024 for rates to come down from 5.25 where they are now to 4.25 by the end of this year. And then the markets are pricing in for another 75 basis points worth of cuts in 2025 by summer of next year for us to come down to 3.5%. Now, how does these two cycles coincide? How does the inflation expectations as well as the Federal Reserve's interest rate expectations coincide together? And what we really want to understand here is that when are real interest rates, real interest rates going to turn negative, meaning that inflation is going to be uh, right now, inflation is below the Federal Reserve's interest rates. That's exactly what we want to see. We want to keep that number positive because that is indeed going to put impact on inflation. If interest rates are below the inflation rate, then interest rates in, on a real basis, real term interest rates actually turn negative. And that's what we want to avoid. We, would, we don't want to see that. Right now, as you can see that we are positive. So on a net basis, real interest rates are 2.28% because that's where we are, right? Inflation is at 2.97. Uh, interest rates are 5.25. So this is nothing but a federal funds rate, as you can see, 5.25 minus the inflation rate headline CPI rate of 2.97. And so the real interest rates are 2.28% positive. And we don't want to see this number turn negative because that number is going to turn negative in one of two instances. If the Federal Reserve continues to lower interest rates aggressively and brings them below inflation, and that's when that number is going to turn negative, that real net uh, interest rate, or inflation accelerates further and crosses above the federal funds rate. So in other words, if inflation accelerated and, and got up to over 5.25% or higher, then in that case, we're going to see real interest rates once again turn negative. That's what, that's not something we want to see. And actually, we did see that going back as far as when we saw inflation at over 9%. Interest rates on a real basis were negative. So this essentially shows you, um, you know, based on different month over month changes in inflation and the Federal Reserve's expectations for interest rate cuts at what point are we going to turn negative? So I really want to highlight some of these areas uh, for all of you uh, where you can see that um, that we are seeing interest rates turn negative. So if I were to essentially highlight this in bold, uh, these right here are the instances where interest rates on a real basis are turning negative. So in other words, if we continue to be on this path of interest rate cuts, and inflation accelerates by 0.1% or more, eventually we are going to see um, interest rates negative. And I don't think that's going to happen. The reason I say it's not going to happen is because if inflation is accelerating by 0.1, 0.2, month over month, every single month, the Federal Reserve is not going to follow this plan of interest rate cuts of 100 basis points this year, 75 basis points next year. Uh, the reason being is because inflation would be accelerating back up. And in these instances, we are 
you know, susceptible and very vulnerable to getting inflation back up to over four, five, six, seven, eight percent, as much as double digits in the 10 to 11 percent. So that's the last thing the Federal Reserve really wants to see. What they really want to see is a very nice, consistent path lower for inflation, getting down to two percent or lower, and also decreasing interest rates to a point where they remain positive on a net basis, on a real basis, they remain positive. So really, we want to operate somewhere over here once again. So even if you are seeing you know, a small increase in inflation month over month, uh, this is only going to lower the probability of interest rate cuts because we don't want to turn negative for real interest rates. So the ideal place over the next 12 months for us to operate is for inflation to not increase at all. We see nothing, no increase, no deflation either. Deflation would be preferable because if you see a 0.1%, 0.2% decline month over month, that's the best case scenario for the markets moving forward. And this is really where the Federal Reserve is hoping they can achieve over the next 12 months is inflation comes down and we continue to lower interest rates while also keeping them positive on a real basis. So hopefully this was a little bit more insightful and you understood what exactly we're, we're looking for. If I plot for this entire chart, it's going to give you a bit of an idea of the different paths that inflation could take depending on how much increase we see on a month over month basis. So this right here is again based on uh, the point 1, point 0.2, point 0.3 uh, and also depending on whether we see deflation that blue line is going to be a 0.2% month over month decline uh, and again eventually we're going to be sitting at 0.73. That's exactly what uh, ideally we would want to see is inflation more stabilizing and coming down to a more respectable level. Uh, going over to the market, so we've already discussed, um, you know, in our previous updates what the overall trend is, but this is on a more technical basis. This is how we've operated for uh, for the market for the S&P 500 ever since the end of that bear market in 2022. And last week, of course, a very nice, um, you know, recovery. We were basically flat, uh, just up over two basis points, but from our low point of 510 for SPY up to 533, we saw a nice 4.5% recovery for the S&P 500. So we did break down a little bit from this uptrending channel, uh, uptrending, I, I should say the higher low. And then this right here is going to be another really important higher low for us to follow all the way down to this right here being the bigger uptrend for the entire S&P 500. So keep a close eye at some of these resistances. Of course, we are coming down to, um, you know, pretty oversold levels on the daily chart. As you'll notice that we are, you know, pretty oversold on the R side, the MACD, as you can see that we're starting to see a little bit of that recovery back up. And, uh, you know, this could also be a bit of a bear flag and a potential breakdown further for the S&P 500 because this is still a pretty reasonable drop for the S&P. At one point, we were down over 9.5% from all-time highs. So those right there are going to be some levels to keep in mind for SPY moving forward. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated with where we are. So, of course, it, it, needless to say that if we come in a little bit hotter than what the expectations are, so if, you know, month over month we increase, so 0.2% is the expectation right now. So 0.2% is not where we want to be because 0.2% is going to put us back over 3.18. So rounding up, it's going to be 3.2. Uh, and CPI year over year, people are expecting 3% for that number on a seasonally adjusted basis. So, so those are the expectations right now. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Again, if we do come in a little bit hotter than what the expectations are, then uh, the market's not going to be very welcoming of those numbers. Um, and uh, there's possibility that we continue on that uh, downward trajectory and uh, we, we potentially hit that nine and a half, close to 10% mark from all time high bases once again. But if you come in a little bit better than expectations, if you come in 0.1% or lower and CPI ends up at under 3%, then that I think is going to be very bullish for the market, considering that inflation is coming down and the Federal Reserve is going to be more, um, more open to the idea of interest rate cuts moving forward. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. And uh, as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.